What up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report, where we talk about the latest news items in the superhero film and TV genre. Joining me tonight, as always, the very knowledgeable and talented Mr. Brian Schultz. What's going on, Brian? What's going on, Pablo? Always good to be here. And it seems like every week, more and more news. You, they, they, it sort of has to happen, right? In order yeah. for them to keep themselves relevant, right? Yeah. Um, but it's a very, uh, very, very exciting times. Hopefully we get some stuff delivered because that's what's sort of missing. Um, we got a jam packed show for you guys tonight. Uh, but before we get into it, um, just want to thank everyone who's uh, been watching the show and liking and, and subscribing and sharing it with their friends. Uh, really appreciate that. Um, and one of the things we try to do at this channel is always improve. And, and so I have one of my best buddies who's a graphic designer, uh, designing some stuff for the aesthetic of the channel. So I'm going to be changing that up. Uh, also we have a segment that we haven't, that I haven't, um, released just yet, uh, because I'm waiting for <clears throat> some graphics for that. That's, I think is going to be dope. Um, it's gonna. It's, it's called Spotlight. I think I mentioned it on the previous show where we just focus on one character and talk about where they were, where they are, and where we think they should be. Uh, so that's gonna be exciting to release. Uh, hopefully next week I can get that done for you guys. Um, but yeah, once again, please comment. Tell us what you don't like. Tell us what you like. Tell us if you disagree with us. I don't care. Just as long as you comment, I'm gonna respond. And, and hopefully Brian has the chance to respond as well. In case some dudes go crazy and start <laughs> insulting me because we don't know nothing or whatever. But, you know, what can we do? Um, so, yeah, we're going to change it up a little bit today. We're going to there's been a lot of news. And so I've broken it down a little bit different this time in terms of uh, format. So we're going to go into the Marvel news. Um, then we're going to go into some DC stuff. Um, and then we're going to go a little bit, you know, not outside of the superhero film genre. Um, and that is Mr. Bond. Um, He's kind of a superhero. Different yeah, story. yeah. A normal <laughs> sort of human being. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're going to first talk about Marvel news. Moon Knight has found his uh, lead, um, which is exciting. Uh, he's a good actor. Uh Oscar Isaacs. Um, I give him a pass on uh, what's that movie called? X Men Apocalypse. Apocalypse. Yes, I give him a pass on that because come on, it wasn't Marvel doing it, and it, Marvel was. Um, sorry, Fox was always a hit or miss on on X Men. Sometimes we got some great stuff. Sometimes we got X Men Three Last Stand. <laughs> um, then we're going to get into, and also, sorry, Moon Knight has also found his director yep. and creator, you said, right? We we still haven't, I still don't know who the creator is. Brian okay, is we'll talk, I'll talk about it, yeah. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk about Shang-Chi. They just rapped on the film. Yep. And uh, Brian had it on his list for a different reason. I don't know what that reason is just yet. He's going to get into that. Um, then we're going to talk about Blade, which we haven't spoken about since the announcement, pretty much, right? Because there was nothing else to talk we about don't. other than the right. announcement. And then uh, I wanted to discuss, hopefully it doesn't get too crazy. Uh, Letitia Wright is, uh, is the latest to call for an all-female Avengers. I have my thoughts on that. Uh, so we're go we'll briefly get into that. Then we'll talk about um, some of the DC news happening. Um, just two items. Uh, Red Hood. We got a leaked uh, photo of uh, of the character and what he's going to look like on Titans. Um, I have my thoughts on that. I don't know how I feel about it just yet. Um, then we got Batwoman. I'll let you know how I definitely feel about that. <laughs> um, then we're going to get into Bond. Um, uh, MGM, you know, trying to shop because it's done. It's ready to go, but nowhere to release, right? Nowhere to, to nowhere to gain that profit. Uh, so they've been shopping that around. Then we'll talk a little bit about the film studio studios and their dilemma that they're facing now because of the pandemic. And uh, then we'll get into, I know we talk about Disney a lot, but Disney, they got Marvel and Star Wars. So why not talk about them every week? Because they have so much to offer, right? Uh, we're going to talk about their, uh, their future business. 
which is very interesting and in what it could become. So first up, Moon Knight yeah. has found its lead, Oscar Isaac, whom I think is a fantastic actor. And for this character, it involves a lot of different... Because uh, uh, Moon Knight has a split personality. Yep. And he's going to act different in different situations. I'm not too familiar with the character. I know I do know that most people or most, most comic book fans compare him to Batman in the DC universe. So I'm very excited to see what how that turns out, right? Um, and there's also found his director and creator. Brian, tell me what you thought about uh, Oscar Isaacs being cast as the lead and the director and the creator that I have no idea who we're talking about. Well, let's start with the last one. So Jeremy Slater is the is the mind behind this show. Now, if you know that name, you probably know it in our world for one of two reasons, maybe both. So he first dabbled in comics. He wrote the original, original draft of the script, which never made it to screen for the 2015 Fantastic Four. So that's the bad news. What, what the first sort of, one? To the Josh Trank one. Okay. So that, however, maybe somewhat defensible because literally none of his script ever made it to screen. Okay. The rumor is what he wrote was something much more MCU in tone. Okay. And Galactus was the villain in that iteration. Wow. So we wow. never saw it. But okay. that existed. Okay. Why you probably know him now and his approval rating is off the charts is he is also the creator of the Umbrella Academy. Oh. So, so you got I think say. right about now you feel like you're in good hands because he's the he's the developer and creator of the Umbrella Academy. He's doing the show. This came together for me pretty quick. I, this was not on my radar that they were this far along. And all of a sudden we've got a director and a star and some interesting choices. The Isaac choice to me, I had a little mixed reaction to this. First off, the visual, I get it in the sense that this person has to be multiple people, different professions, different personalities. I actually liken it to, if you're familiar with The Saint, that was like an old TV show, like it was like a spy, but he kind of was like a spy who inhabited- Didn't Val Kilmer do a movie about that? They did, Val Kilmer did a movie in the 90s, but Roger Moore was The Saint. He obviously was mm. James Bond as well. And so that's kind of like what I think of when I think of this character. And so Oscar Isaac, to me, visually, he can be like, just very simply, he can be Caucasian. He is Latin, he's Guatemalan. He can be Middle Eastern. He can, so he, he already he has, look. has this has a good sort look. of nebulous look of it. You don't really know where he's from. So I get where they're going with that. The only reservation I have, you gave him a pass for Apocalypse. It has seemed to me so far when Oscar Isaac has been involved with the blockbuster genre, it hasn't quite hit yet. You know, he's, He's been in the Bourne franchise, but it was Bourne Legacy. He's in the X-Men franchise, but it's Apocalypse. You know, Star Wars, I'm not going to hang that on him, but Poe yeah. Dameron just isn't going to be that memorable a character for me. Yeah. Um, so it's felt like he's always knocking at the door of being the lead or the, the star in a big franchise. Yeah. We just haven't quite gotten there yet. So that's my only reservation is and this is a really challenging part i think this is probably one of the meteor roles that the you could have because of all the things you have to do like you're a you're a spy you're a boxer but then you're also pretending to be all these other people so yeah. i think he's got it in him as an actor i of just course. you know i just like i said we, we haven't seen that one 10 out of 10 he's nailed one of these roles yet and that's my only sort of hold up on this um, there was another movie uh, that he did. It was a crime drama sort of thing. It was. It was. I don't. I don't. I don't think a lot of people know about it. He sort of reminded me of uh, Michael Corleone in The Godfather. Hmm. Uh, I, I don't know if, if you know that movie I'm talking about. I don't remember off the top of my head. I mean, I, know, I saw Inside Lou and Davis. That's the one, obviously, that it was a breakthrough as an actor. Um, yeah. But. But. Um. So. I oh, in think, Triple Frontier. He's quite good in Triple. That's a good, good movie. I haven't, I haven't seen that. He's pretty good in that. Yeah. So he's done. He's done a lot, and 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 obviously, oh, uh, he was in um, Ex Machina. He was he was good in that. Yes, good call. He was he excellent. Was, he, he was good in that. So he has the acting chops to portray a character as uh, diverse. I would say as Moon Knight with all these multiple personalities. So I'm 
curious and excited to see how he'll portray each one of those um, uh, iterations uh, of, of Moon Knight or that personal uh, specter. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, when you said uh, Umbrella Academy, it, I instantly remembered the scene in Pulp Fiction when Jewel said, oh, you bringing in the wolf? Man, that's all you had to say. <laughs> 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 so I'm excited for that because Umbrella Academy is amazing. Fantastic. Um, the director, I... I had no, I don't, I don't know who this guy is. Um, I, I did a little bit of research, and apparently he wrote one of the the the, the highest grossing uh, Egyptian Arabic film in in, in history, and uh, he's gonna bring that, I guess, that authenticity, um, being that he goes to Egypt, and there's certain sites probably that we've never seen before. So I think it's gonna be a bit, a bit of a different look, and uh, I'm excited to see what. Um, Moon Knight has to offer and it's Marvel man so and if Kevin Feige's uh, uh, you know in charge then I'm, I'm all for it I agree but it's also like this is the kind of director we're seeing a little bit more from Marvel like if you think about we'll talk about Shang-Chi but Destin Daniel Cretton had done smaller movies Just Mercy and then now he's doing this Chloe Zhao's doing the Eternals but it's always key I think when you have that steady hand behind them so whether it's Kevin Feige or in this case I mean Jeremy Slater like you you it's unassailable what an Umbrella Academy is. So he's kind of behind the director, keeping things in line. I love the upside of Mohamed Diab. I think I think it's great. Like a 40-year-old, you know, e Egyptian director who's never really kind of had a, a big Western film franchise. I think it's the kind of person that should be getting this shot. And so um, very, very excited. Very excited to see this come together because now we're basically at a point where we should be hearing, you know, script rumors and yeah. you know, kind of storylines starting to really kind of come out. Uh, yeah, they, they're really moving it along um, with all of their stuff. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing Moon Knight. Tell me what you guys think in the comment section below, whether you're excited about Jason Knight and uh, Oscar Isaacs being casted, the director, the creator. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comment section below. Next up, Shang-Chi has wrapped filming. Now, if you've watched our show, you guys know that I am very, very excited for this movie. Many people are excited for this movie. Um, many people have said that this is the Matrix uh, and Enter the Dragon sort of uh, mixed uh, look. Um, and it's going to be, I I'm hoping that it's something that we've never seen before. With regards to martial arts and the fighting sequence, uh, um, cho choreography, because Obviously, Iron Fist left the back, even though that wasn't Marvel, but Iron Fist, what I, what I was expecting was great martial arts. And we, we didn't get that. Apparently, I heard that he was, he practiced the moves or, or, or learned the moves very, with very short time, like a day or two. And, and, and we got what we got and it showed. So I'm looking forward to seeing what, uh shang chi looks like and uh and many people are i'm wondering also whether we're gonna see this in the movie theaters most likely in china we will maybe but here 100%. in the states well, i don't know i'll yeah, lay yeah. any dollar it's just i'm so high on this this as a, as sort of the, one of the new franchises for marvel um but i think definitely the, the, there, you have the inherent appeal of all the marvel properties in china but this in particular if they nail it what it can be overseas. I don't see any way they bring this to Disney plus as the primary medium. The Chinese box office is already basically bigger than the U S. So yeah. this is, and, and I think people need to be aware too, like they've been careful in their casting choices to be respectful, not just of Asia, but of China specifically. And that's critical. I think if you go back to like crazy rich Asians, which did incredibly well here, didn't do well at all in China because even though it was a predominantly Asian or, or Asian cast, not all Asians are the same. <laughs> so the fact that they had sort of mixed ethnicities across the roles relative to the book actually caused some controversy in Asian markets. They're avoiding that with this. So, yeah. so here's my question for you. Are you surprised they were able to keep this production as under wraps as they did? We basically have seen like a very grainy few set photos. But yeah. like this is a big movie and we saw almost nothing in production. Relative to like we, we see know. photos of the Batman every yeah. day. <laughs> All we know is some of the blue screen we've seen with the, there was a helicopter uh yep. 
uh, it was like a village green yeah, and then a village with the green screen so we're gonna yeah. see some nice cinematography i suppose but we re- i mean we do know we're getting fing fang foom yeah. we, we're getting um mandarin the real one the, the real mandarin we know little bits and pieces we also know is a tournament uh that's supposed to take place so who knows who are, who who will be the participants? We know little things here and there, which is fine, but we don't know any major stuff. And no. I, I am quite surprised that they've been able to keep um, a lot of that stuff on the on the wraps, which is great for us because when we do see it, we're gonna be like, "This is amazing," which I hope yeah. it is. I hope it is, and I and I feel that they will because, again, I think uh, Marvel knows what they have to deliver, and they have to deliver something something fantastic. And Shang Chi is something that they can really uh, make bank if they do it correctly. Yeah. Um, I'm also super high on so Tony Leung who plays who plays the Mandarin. I have been in the camp that Marvel has struggled with its villains for the most part. I think this is the guy. I think that can fix that. I think okay. he is. I mean, this is. Why do you say that? A, so, one is I think, Mar- as we know, Marvel learns and listens very well. I think they, despite the box office success of Iron Man three, I think they know that they kind of got one over on the fans with how the Mandarin was portrayed. So, I think they're going to be extra careful to give a true iteration of that. Oh character. hell's yeah! I think in choosing Tony Leung, that's the equivalent of, I was trying to think of like who that would be over here. It would kind of be like having, it'd almost be like a kind of, like it would be almost like having like Daniel Day-Lewis play your villain. Wow. It's like, like he's regarded as one of the greatest Asian actors of all time. Wow. If you've never seen Infernal Affairs, that's the inspiration for The Departed. It's an amazing Hong Kong action movie. He also was in Hard Boiled, which was one of John Woo's. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's with Chow Yun Fat and that. He's an amazing actor. So I'm, I'm kind of betting that the Mandarin is not only great, but doesn't die in this movie. That I this, hope this not. character sticks around past this film. And so I, I think yes. that is sort of my number one like hope for this movie. And then as I think I mentioned, maybe might have mentioned before, I had a chance to watch Simu Liu in a comedic role on Netflix and Kim Kimi, and I'm high on him. I, I see like he's he's got good athleticism, really good charisma. Like he th- he's going to make him a star, but I think he's ready to be a star. So I those two going head to head in this film has me incredibly excited. And then, like I said, Destin Daniel Cretton, really talented director. So uh, I'm just. Like I said, I'm shocked that nothing's come out about. It. Like we haven't seen costumes, we haven't seen like real yeah. looks of characters. Yeah, it is Nothing. tight, tight for a movie that's this big. I can't wait for that first trailer. Unbelievable. Yeah. I know we're not gonna get a movie right now. They just finished the, the movie, um, but that first trailer I think is gonna be amazing, and I'm I, I can't wait for it. Before we move on, I just wanted to ask you a question: How would you feel of about it being released in China and it not uh, being released here in the States. If that's if that happens. I know what you're saying. Yeah, I hope it makes it to the theater. And the reason I say that is I think about in my lifetime from a martial arts perspective, I think the only, so the movies that I've been alive for, the only analog I can think of where like you saw the first trailer and you were, and you were like, when is this movie coming out? It was probably the original Matrix, right? 1999, you see that first trailer shot of bullet time and you're like, what is this? <laughs> and like, when is this coming out? So yeah, yeah, if we yeah. get anything like that in the trailer, like one one shot of martial arts where we're like the angle of the speed or the way it's shot, you're like, I've never seen anything like that before. I really hope it goes to the theaters because I need to see that on a giant screen. <laughs> yeah. But the, I know what you're saying, though. The, the money, the fear, is, the you figure fear, it out. The, yeah, yeah, the fear is that we're, because of what's going on and how much in control of what we're going through, that it makes it possible for us to go to the theater. And if it's not, then most likely they'll probably offer something that we can pay for it online. I hope so. I just hope that because you know people spoil stuff, and you, you know it's the age of the internet. People are gonna see it, and people are gonna yeah. post stuff about it. And I just don't want to be waiting while other people have seen it already so i'm hoping for for some sort of uh middle ground where we get to see it around the same time as well um but yeah tell us what you think about shang chi are you guys excited about shang chi i'm sure you guys are 
What are your worries? What are your concerns? Let us know in the comment section below. Blade. Now we have something happening. We got an article a few days ago about how Mahershala Ali uh, wanted to do Blade. He was talking to his agent and trying to figure out what's going on so that he can get on. And he's on now, right? And now they're looking for writers. Do they even have a director? I don't think they have a director yet, right? No. Now we've gotten to the stage of they're looking for writers. To me, it seems like Disney or Marvel is stepping on the gas pedal to get things going, right? To get content out there because not, I don't want to, you know, divert this conversation towards Netflix, but Netflix has a lot of things going on. They got Assassin's Creed coming on to Netflix. They have great choice, by the way, for a serial video game adaptation. Can't think of a game franchise that fits better with a Netflix conflict concept than, yeah. than that. And, and just to just to say this point with, with with Assassin's Creed is that they're going the right route. Movies with and games, games, games turning into movies or being made into movies don't usually work out because honestly, at the end of the day, most people don't know who these characters are, their motivations. They don't care. And so they usually tend not to do well and movie studios or directors don't know what the hell to do with them. They just been hired to do this film and they do it. With this, we get a little bit of exposition. We get a little bit of understanding and uh, I, I'm looking forward to that. So Blade, you know, they want to lean towards the rated R aspect of, of Blade, obviously. And uh what are your what were your thoughts i mean there's nothing really too much to decipher from what we've gotten we just know that they're moving along and trying to get stuff out this one feels a little further away to me to be mm -hmm. quite honest right so when we had that discussion about moon Knight, it's like okay you got all your pillars together which means you know what your vision is that means everyone's discussed it everyone's on board so now mm -hmm. you know where you're sailing the ship this one still feels a little bit more like it's star driven and we haven't quite figured out exactly which storyline we want to adapt. Yeah. You know, what tone we want to take to your point, no director, um, showrunner, we still don't really have. So I think this one feels like they're kind of throwing, they're kind of more just figuring out the idea, but they haven't really hit on exactly the motif for this. And to your point, if Marvel is developing sort of this, R-rated label, which it sounds like they are, like a variant of what they're doing, and they're going to create sort of a world within that. That all feels pretty early to me. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, heard yeah. the stuff about Ryan Reynolds. Like, we don't even know what they're intending to do with Deadpool, which is the obvious flagship for that. But this clearly would fit under that umbrella. So this feels like, okay, we're finally getting progress. That's great. This still feels like it's a little ways away from being kind of hot off the press or really kind of coming to us anytime soon. I, I don't even know if they'd be ready to put this on the calendar for like 22 or 23 at this yeah, point. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, but I wouldn't be surprised, man, if they, if by the, by the end of this year or first quarter of next year that we have a, a little bit more in regards to Blade and what's happening with that character. I'm pretty sure Mahershala Ali wants to get started. Uh, pretty sure Marvel wants to get started on just producing some content. And if it has to go to Disney Plus, I think... What's happening now is that movie studios are creating content, not quite sure, not quite sure where it's gonna go, but they have to have it ready for when things uh, start happening, I guess. The other subplot to this, which you didn't mention is, I believe the story said they're specifically looking for African-American, right? They want the writing and the production side of this to actually be kind of driven by the African-American community. So that's actually part of storyline within this too. So that may also explain kind of the patience and, and the care they're taking with this. Mm -hmm. um, and that's great. So I think that's something they're they're trying to trying to get right. To your other point, Marisha Ali, I mean, two time Oscar winner, he's going to be in demand and this is not going to be a short shoot, I would think. Yeah. So they're going to have to get on his schedule um, for a good block of time whenever they can figure this out. Do you think actors who are great actors who have been in some decent films are looking to do something uh, that will, I guess, 
I don't know if I want to say catapult, but certainly get them in the limelight with not even necessarily with the limelight, but to do something exciting. Um, because obviously right now with movies and movie studios, there's a lot of uncertainty. Um, and certainly DC, Marvel, and uh, other franchises are looking to uh, get content out and create stuff that, you know, guys like Oscar Isaac, Mahershala Ali, uh, and perhaps others are trying to get on board and, and, and do something that's going to not necessarily, how, how would I say, not notice, but um, get them, get people talking. Right. I think it. I think it depends on the character and the actor. Like I would say, Mahershala Ali's profile should be a list of a list. So yes. Two yes. Oscars. If you can't, you guys won two Academy Awards in three years. So <laughs> the list of guys that have done that is very short. Right? Yeah, so yeah. We should know who this guy is, and when he walked on stage and put on the hat, I mean, I think there was a huge reaction, and sort of it, it, it lends a credibility to the project immediately. So, I do think. There is a, like I said, it goes back to the freedom aspect. I think what they find in these series is the freedom. Now that there's the money, like now that they're putting big film budget behind these productions, and it's like I can get six, eight, ten hours worth of work and script mm -hmm. out. I think there's a freedom to that that a lot of actors like, um, and a lot of directors. We talked about it before with directors. So like the ability to explore the character, go deep on the storylines, especially if it's a passion project, which I think Blade is from Mahershala Ali. That's the yeah, character yeah. he most you know closely identifies with. Then. Yeah, I think they just find that there, there's more room to operate in the TV medium and the streaming medium than there is in, hey, we got to get one two hour edited movie up, up on screen. Do you think they're considering a series? I think they're considering this character as being able to cross over between serial and film. That would be my guess. Okay. Is they want the character available. He's, he's too big of an actor, I think, to be confined just to the series. My guess is whatever deal they have allows him to jump into team up movies, buddy movies. Like he, he's available in some capacity to yeah. do a couple of those. Yeah. Let us know what you guys think. I mean, there's certainly hasn't been a lot of news about Blade. Now we got some, but is there cause for excitement? I don't think so because we really don't still know much. All we know that Mahershala Ali is starring as, as Blade. And that they're looking for writers, so obviously they don't have a story, uh, and there's not a lot of things to go on. So uh, tell us what you think. Are you excited? I'm pretty sure you guys are excited, but is there enough to be going crazy over? I don't think so. I'm I'm going crazy over Shane Chi, that's yeah. for sure. Um, next up, Letitia Wright, who was phenomenal, by the way, in uh, Black Panther, and the first time I actually saw her in. Um, uh, I saw her, the first time I saw her was in Black Panther, but then I saw her also, I don't know if you've ever seen the show on Netflix called Black Mirror. No, I've not. Oh, she's on the first season of Black Mirror. I think she's probably one of the last episodes. She was, it was a pretty dope episode. If you get a chance, check it out. Um, she is the latest to call for an all-female Avengers. Um, first off, in Endgame, when we got that shot, the one character I did notice was a little bit over the top in terms of her reaction was the Wasp. Um, but that shot was, to me, cringeworthy. To me, it was ridiculous. Why? Because it's like, okay, out of all this chaos that's going on, all you guys are together at that point and... It just didn't make sense to me. I don't know what's the big deal. I was reading some comments earlier today, and there was one dude that said, um, if I haven't seen an all-male Avengers, why would I want to see all-female oh, wow. Avengers? <laughs> I was laughing. I gave him a like. Because it, it, why does it have to come to that? Why is there some sort of call for action to 
that we need an a, a force yes a force is a thing in the comics um it was introduced in 2015 and it was uh canceled in 2016 they had their own comics it was canceled in 2016 because of poor sales and not to say anything about an old female avengers is that if you're gonna do it it can't be ghostbusters <laughs> it can't be i mean i haven't seen the movie uh oceans eight i haven't That's seen what i was gonna say it's fine oceans eight is fine that's the one i was gonna say is like yeah. this, is, this is oceans eight with superpowers yeah i mean that, that listen if you're gonna do anything don't just do it just because somebody says do it do it gracefully do it where it makes sense one of the storylines i heard was some sort of organism or alien organism that comes to earth and only affects male superheroes or whatever what i'm saying is that the, it has to make sense it can't be an a force team just to have it because we, what is the purpose? It's one thing to say we want an A-Force. Okay. How are you going to deliver? Are they, are they just saying that they eventually want? What happens five or ten years down the line and no A-Force? Are they going to be picketing and, and, you know, going crazy for this? We have Black Widow, which is a fantastic character. I, I love Black Widow. I can't wait for Black Widow. The Dora Milaje in Black, Ma in Black Panther was fantastic. Jessica Jones, I liked the show. Underrated. Yeah. Underrated. She's great. So there is representation in that respect. I don't see the, not, I'm not going to say necessity. I, I don't see the reason for it right now. If you're going to do it, it better make sense. If not, Ghostbusters. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think this, uh, so uh, is there justification for it? Sure, of course. Like I said, Ocean's 8 was fine. It's it's a, it's a solid movie. It stands alone. You can watch it. It's not bad. The, the struggle with this is everything that's been done to date has been a careful construction of the characters. And if you're putting together any sort of team, they work pretty hard to introduce you to parts of the team and then the whole team and then to the point where right there's both stakes and you care about the team when they finally get to whatever the big showdown is going to be the problem here is you're rushing it so if you go right to a team and it's female avengers even if they're characters we have seen in some capacity before let's be honest a lot of these characters have not really been fully fleshed out yet like, I think, you know, we're, we're, we're down the path with Tessa Thompson as Valkyrie a bit. I think we'll get a lot more in Love and Thunder, but we're not there yet. Even Shuri, it's one film. She was awesome. There's a yeah. lot of white space just for her character. Yeah. So if you said, okay, I'm going to do that with eight of these or six of these in one movie. Hmm. I mean, I think people forget the original Avengers, a big event. It's not that big of a movie. If you break down the scenes in that, a lot of the focus is really intimate. It's two characters, two to three characters. And then you get the one battle at the end where they finally team up. It was a really smart way to get you to care over the course of the movie. I don't I don't think we're there yet. I think we're, we're yeah. skipping three or four steps. Yeah. So I think if they're going to do this, I would... If you're going to go that route, and that's the end game, pun intended, of what you want to do, start with a pair. Start with a tr start with a smaller subgroup with a storyline that you're going to carry through a couple of couple of events, maybe a series, maybe maybe a couple. Films. Yeah. And then by the time you get to the end, it might make a little more sense, especially because this is an area where the multiverse can help you because you could create a situation where this is your only available option to defend this reality or this earth. So. It, it, it can't be all the male Avengers go out fishing. No, and that's too cheap. It can't that's be too dumb. Cheap. Too cheap. It, it can't be dumb. If they do it, let it happen. They shouldn't be because 
the more and more I think they talk about it, the more and more is going to feel like they were forced into it. And we may or may not like it. We, I'm going to go and certainly with some reservations. I'm, I'll go see it. But I just hope they just chill, man, because we've got a bunch of fe- great female characters. I don't, think give, yeah, I don't think they're giving Disney or Marvel enough credit either because I feel yeah. like that studio gets that. Of I don't think they have to worry that somehow in yeah. three, four, five years they, that things will have backslid and they will have lost progress. I think it's the opposite. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell us what you think in the comment section. Do you think, obviously, a, a bunch of people believe that that endgame scene was atrocious um, and didn't like it. Uh based on a lot of the comments that I've read in on, on Instagram and on YouTube, uh, tell us what you guys think. Should they just let things happen naturally? Don't even, there shouldn't be this call for action. It's like, yo, uh, there's been females in these movies, memorable characters in these movies. What's the complaint? Is it pay? That's something different. That's something totally different, but not, to, but don't say, oh, we need this or, or, or we want this. Like, nobody's really saying we want this. So the, so the only other thing I'll toss in here is mm-hmm. because they're expanding the universe so much and we're getting a lot of new female characters as well, mm-hmm. there's not going to be room for all of them in this. So if you're in the original generation, the one aspect I could sympathize with is they're like, well, I don't want to lose my spot. Yeah, <laughs> if yeah, She-Hulk yeah, yeah. hits it big or if Ms. Marvel hits it big. Remember, like, you know, Ms. Marvel in the comics at one point is sort of the quarterback for a set reassembling the Avengers. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. It, you can't put 15 of these characters in one film. You might only have room for six or seven. So you got to make the cut too, yeah, which is yeah, part yeah. of this. So. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, you, you, the characters have to be uh, memorable. Certainly, Shuri is going to is certainly going to be in there. Captain Marvel, uh, She Hulk. If it, I'm most most probable, she's going to probably be a member of that as well. Yeah. We don't. Um, but you know, again, I just think they should just chill with the. The, the the forcefulness in, in 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 wanting this they should just marvel knows but they're gonna take that <clears throat> they're gonna take their time and it, if if you know if they do it in five years then so be it it'll happen but right now the way things are going is fine so let us know what you think uh in regards to Letitia Wright wanting uh all female Avengers next up we're gonna talk about DC the ever exciting DC and not because of the movies <laughs> <laughs> uh, only for Batman, the Batman. That's the only thing I'm really excited for. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm curious and, and a bit excited for for Suicide Squad. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that, and, and, and certainly Peacemaker with John Cena. I'm looking forward to seeing that when they make that happen. But we got a little bit of a sneak peek as to what the Red Hood Red Hood is going to look like on Titans. Here's my problem: Are they going to follow? the storyline from the comics from the animated film which was fantastic under the red hood under the red hood was dope yeah it's one of my favorites along with doom or justice league doom um and a bunch of others too dc is one thing dc does really well is the animated films i have my reservations i not I, I'm not looking forward to uh, a retelling of uh, Red Hood that's different from the comics. We already know that Batman is old as hell in this film. I'm mean, not sorry, not in this film, in, on Titans. I don't know how much of a part he's going to play in it. I don't know if jason todd dies and he comes back to life because of ross i don't know how they're gonna do it i just hope that and i'll say this the guy that plays jason jason todd in titans is 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 great he's great i i like him as jason todd he sort of gives me that jason todd sort of vibe um but is it a bit early for red hood because i know at the end of titans he bounces in the second season. I don't know if you've seen it. Yeah, no, I've seen every episode. So. Um, 
and he does he come back as the Red Hood? So I guess we got to figure out why he why he turns into the Red Hood, and I, we got to figure all that stuff out. I don't know how they're gonna do it. I, I have my reservations to uh, how they're gonna do that. Um, let's see. What do you think? Uh, my expectations are low. Let me give you a couple of reasons why. And I, they have been low since the minute they announced that Jason Todd was going to be a part of this show. Because to your point, the red hood or Jason Todd. No, th- th- when they announced that Jason Todd was going to play sort of second Robin as a cast of Titans, you kind of knew, okay, at some point we're headed in a red hood direction. You don't yeah. choose that character unless you intend to do that. The yeah. problem is they don't have the rest of the backstory to make it feel legit. Mm. Right? The, the, the trauma of the Joker beating him to death and then blowing him up, right? Like that whole sequence is meant to be disturbing, right? But it's yes, also yes, meant yes. to show you the, the emotional trauma he's going through in addition to the physical that then leads him down the path to when he is brought back from the Lazarus pit Okay, I understand why that guy's got a you know few things loose in his head, a few issues that he's got to go out. There's none of that here. Basically, it's like you've got some teen drama among the team, <laughs> and he's walked out. And it's like, why? Because he they dropped him in that one episode, and he like injured his back. Or yeah. I, nah, I can't get there. So yeah, I, to yeah. me, it's like the catalyst to make him a great villain just isn't there. And to your point, Batman's not big enough in this show as well. You, you need the Joker, you need Batman for that character to then become this sort of arch nemesis. Uh, so to set him up for the entire team, which it seems like they're doing just because he was one of them, I think it's shaky. I think it's shaky. I'm curious too. Lazarus Pit, I'm curious as well because I have this feeling that Donna Troy is coming back. I feel like they kind of already teased that. Like she mm-hmm. died, but then there was like a hint in their show on the funeral and it sort of has this sense of we haven't seen the last of her really, which makes me think the Lazarus pit does exist. So maybe that is going to be part of this, but mm-hmm. I'm skeptical that we're going to view this as a great villain uh, over the course of a full or even a half season. Yeah. A um, couple of things. One of, one of my favorite scenes in under the red hood was that last scene where Jason Todd tells Batman why he does, why he's doing what he's doing. Yeah, um, that was a great scene, and I don't know if we'll get that interaction between Batman and 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 Red Hood. Um, and one of the things that that I, I was left with in season two that the Bruce Wayne in that restaurant when he called him, he called a couple of them. That wasn't Bruce Wayne. That was somebody else. So I'm really curious to find out what's that all about. Yep. But yeah, I, I agree with you, man. I don't know if this is going to come off well. I don't know how the comic book fans are going to react towards it. I'm pretty sure he's going to probably look dope. It's going to probably be some cool action scenes, but I'm not in it totally just for that. I'm in it to, I'm in it to see the live action version right. of the conflict that he has with what happened to him and blaming Batman for it. So... It's kind of the story of that show, though, right? Like, that show has moments, but it's been pretty uneven. For, yeah. For, I don't think they've quite cracked the code yet. Yeah. Um, it definitely has a lot of promise. When I saw the first season, I was like, yo, this is this is really dope. And some of the individual characters are played very well. Like, I think Brenton Thwaites as Dick Grayson is a yeah. very believable character. Yeah. I think you met, you know, Curran Walters is who plays Jason Todd. Yeah, he has kind of that mean streak like even when you see him on the good side you're like oh i could see where this guy would be yeah take much to push him in the wrong mm-hmm. direction but um but yeah it just quite it just hasn't been consistent for me like yeah. week to week yeah. yeah yeah so we'll see man what do you guys think about the red hood and the sneak peek i'm pretty sure some people are excited about even just having the red hood in the titan show but i'm looking for a little bit more than that tell me what you guys think uh about this uh red hood um let's see let's see uh batwoman i've never been so un- excited <laughs> about a show i didn't see the it was there a whole full season of the first one yeah and she was 
they backdoored her on one of the prior on one of the other shows she did an arc with um for a couple episodes that's how they sort of introed kate kane and then they they spun that into a whole season so, yeah. mm. listen um looks like good cosplay <laughs> it, 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 it doesn't is this going to be on cw yeah and there's the other problem like i listen i used to be the first few seasons of flash was dope i was watching it every week yeah. then it got crazy when i think i stopped watching after we are the flash <laughs> Uh, and then and then Iris being the one that, that's running things. I was, I was like, that's it. I can't take this anymore. Um, I am not excited for this, man. I saw the the, the, the photo and it's like, yeah. I don't care. What are, what what are your what were your thoughts? I mean, uh, it, it's no fault of the no fault of the actress. I just the CW universe and TV has just become too even for. I think for us, who corny. Are, it's, too, it's just too much, you know. It's like yeah, yeah. No, this is an example to me of like these shows should have been should have been shorter and had ended. Like I get why a network keeps going because it's better than the alternative and people watch the genre. So like even if it's lower rated, I can get five six seasons out of Supergirl. I do it, but. I think we'd have been much better off had they gone sort of like, hey, it's a defined two or three seasons for each of these characters and we're going to keep a rotation and keep it. It's just gotten too cluttered. There's just yeah, too yeah, much. Yeah. I think when they even went to like Legends of Tomorrow, I was like, I can't even keep track of everybody that's on this show. Um, it's just, it's too much. So to me, it's like, it's almost just DOA because I, it's so far down the pecking order. I just can't get excited because if I'm going to go watch the CW Universe it's not even going to make my top three or four just to look at. So it's not a yeah. fault of anyone doing yeah. it. It's too much there. So Yeah. I haven't watched one episode of um, Legends of Tomorrow. I haven't watched one episode, even though they say it's good, of Star Girl. I, I'm just not interested. I'm just not interested. Um, I'm more interested in what the DC film aspect is doing. Um and HBO Max. That's the other. And, and like, HBO Max. That's where we're going to get the higher production value and yeah. better characters. Yeah. So yeah. So um, let us know what you think about Batwoman, man. I, I'm pretty sure there's not a lot of people excited. I'm pretty sure there's people saying, "Oh, they switched the character POC or whatever." But listen, I understand all that. But even if they, even with Ruby Rose, I was like, I don't care about this character like that because to me, if to me, is this. If you're doing some character that lives in the Batman universe, Batman's presence has to be felt. I cannot ignore him. Um, I, I, you know, I was interested in Titans because I know Batman was around was around in the first season. You saw Batman doing a few things, right? So you, I was excited for that. It just led me towards the belief that one day we're going to get a Batman series. Uh, I don't know what Gotham is going to be like on HBO Max, uh, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be dope. Um, so let us know what you think about Batwoman. Uh, now I, hope, I hope we see Ruby Rose back in a comic book adaptation again. She's pretty badass. When what you would you cast the- her as? Who would, who would you cast her? But, I, but like, I don't know. But like, if you if you see her, and I think it's John Wick two that I think she's in. Mm-hmm. She's she's very good at sort of like a presence and a fit like she at yeah. a physical presence. So I don't know exactly what went down with that situation. But I just as a as an actress, I hope we haven't seen the last of her in one of these. It's somewhere in one of these properties. I, I think, think she knew that. what what was going on. I, th- I think she didn't want to. I think it was a job. The excitement of being in the DC world was probably initially something exciting for her, but once she saw what 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 it, it involved, and that the the fans weren't really feeling it, I think she decided to you know I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. I me personally, I think that's what happened. But um, let's see what 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 she gets. Um, in, in, in the future. Next up, we have MGM shopping around Bond because it's done. 
burning a hole in their pocket. <laughs> yeah, they've lost some money on it. They're 50 million out on this. <laughs> and they were shopping it for 600 mil. Now, if they get it sold, that's a pretty good take. I think the budget was what? 250. Yeah, 250, yeah. And you get what? Uh, 350 out of it? You don't got to promote it. You don't got to do anything. You let somebody else do it. That's a pretty good take, man. If if they were finding anyone's... What happened there? Did Apple or these other uh, streaming platforms didn't want it for that price tag? So what I read was it was $600 million, but only for the rights for one year. Uh, it wasn't... You didn't own the film. You could uh, license... So you could stream it for one year for 600 million, but then it would revert back to MGM. And the rumor was that the highest bid wasn't even half of what they were asking for. Now, my question to that is to bid even 300, I would love to know what numbers they base that on. Cause we've never yeah. seen this really try. Like this is my whole issue with this. Like, I, I think you're gonna have a market for this at some point, this idea of, I have a property, I'm open to not sending it to the big screen, but here's my reserve price for doing that. Mm -hmm. We just don't have enough reference points for that. Like Mulan doesn't, you know, we don't have enough data on even, on even how that went. Yeah, We won't know how Seoul goes until after Christmas. So I think over time, you, as you get more properties and get more statistics to say, okay, if I have this type of property and I stream it for this amount of time, I can make X amount of dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then yeah. you'll have a sense of how to value this. I have no idea how they came up with the 600 i have no idea how the bidders came up with 300. i don't think one property will get subscribers because this is what these streamer streaming platforms want is subscribers i don't think one property at that price tag is worth it if no. they're going to see the movie once and then bounce i think honestly think like that the netflixes of the world would rather pay billions for the broccoli family to sell bond entirely so you get the oh, whole catalog plus hell's yeah. then pay 600 million for one movie of course yeah. so it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that i mean listen they keep on postponing all these uh these movies are keep getting delayed and they do it for the hope that something changes or something, some breakthrough happens with vaccines or whatever that, that things can get back to normal. And the further and further we get into this and there seems to be no improvement, what do they do? What is the, what is the, 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 the sign that points towards we're going to have to take an L or we release we release it in the theaters in um, in China and other places outside the U.S. or in countries that are doing well, and see what happens there, and just take the L on that. At least we get something back, right? I don't know, but certainly six hundred mil is, and especially at with the terms that you described now, or just having it for a year and then it's gone six hundred million with with no guarantees that you're gonna gain enough subscribers to make that back or or, or that the people that subscribe stick around so we i don't know we, we also don't even know how good it is so we yeah, assume man. it's good but i mean daniel craig bond has been uneven like skyfall amazing you know Spectre? Casino Royale, very good i like casino royale but Spectre, disappointing. Yeah, like, it's very. kind of been up and down. So, like, we think it's good. It's his last run. We assume he would not leave us with a with a dud. But, like, if you're bidding on this, not knowing how good it actually is as well, a lot of variables here. I, I can understand why you would be a little hesitant to, to, to get involved with these talks. Yeah. The, Spectre was sort of like a more hardcore Roger Moore type Bond <laughs> film. It just it, it was tough coming off Skyfall because that was like wow like we yeah. we we got we got everything lined up with Skyfall and then Spectre kind of was like uh, you know I think if Skyfall hadn't happened I probably feel better about Spectre today quite honestly but because mm -hmm. Skyfall happened and he had the same creative team 
Mm -hmm. is the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys tell us what you think about MGM trying to get rid of, not get rid of, but trying to sell the idea that this is worth six hundred million for one year lease uh, on this on any of these guys' streaming platforms. I, I certainly don't think it's worth it, Brian. I, 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 you, you seem to not think that it's worth it, or there, there is no data to 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 justify paying that much well, for here, one property. Like, the other thing too is, I'm if I'm Netflix or if I'm, I don't know, this doesn't really seem like a Disney property, but if they want it, I'm, or Amazon, I have deeper pockets than MGM, right? So if we think about what does MGM have as a studio label besides bond franchise in terms of true repeatable rewatchable ip not a lot it's yeah. this and it's control i don't know the economics of like how the broccoli family owns this but if you're amazon you're and you're netflix you're like that's fine you'll be back at the table six <laughs> to nine months if theaters aren't open and that bid's not going to be that ask is not going to be 600 it might be 400 it might be three. like that's yeah yeah, it is a part of that, too. They're going to have to take an L. They're going to have to take an L. And whether an L is them pocketing a $100 million profit, it is what it is. It's not going to be... Again, there aren't. There isn't any uh, scenario where a movie that's fantastic makes a billion dollars now at the box office. And they clearly... If you're putting $250 million of budget into the last one of the Daniel Craig Bonds, you're thinking a billion dollars in your head. Like you're not playing for 500 million. Like you're thinking in your head, this is a billion dollar film, mm -hmm. which is what Skyfall was. But yeah. Yeah. So yeah, let us know what you guys think. Um, this leads us to a very interesting, um, perfect segue into a, an interesting conversation with regards to the film studios and all the content that they have that they can't release into movie theaters. What was funny to me the other day, I was the, the other day I was watching a commercial uh, with Vince Vaughn. He has this Freaky Friday type film coming out. Yeah, I was watching it and I was like, let me pay attention to this to, to see if I get a release date. Where is being released? Nothing. No. Tell me if I let me know in the comment section below if you see any indication as to where this movie is being released, because I have no idea. What are film studios that probably have uh, a lot of this stuff done, a lot of IP ready to go and are in the middle of, where do they go? Obviously, you have streaming platforms like Amazon, Apple, Netflix, um, Disney, perhaps, that could take this off of you. Coming to America got sold for how much? $125 million. Right. And let's say it was 60 million dollars to make the movie. That's what they, they would have to make. Quite a bit of money in order to get 125 mil. So that's a win for them, kind of. What are film studios now? The manufacturers of IP to sell because they can't release them into. The movie theaters. I. I question whether every studio is going to make it, to be quite honest, at the rate we're going. There are few studios that have the breadth of properties that I think you need to really survive. We were talking about this a little bit the other day. You know, we mentioned MGM associated with Bond. Paramount's on the smaller side. It's really just Mission Impossible, but they're swiftly going to come up on this same problem, right? The, yeah. The last two of that series, the two-parter with Chris McQuarrie and Tom Cruise, like they're filming that, wrapping that now. That's supposed to come out next year and the year after. And that's kind of it. Like yeah. not a lot behind that in terms of franchise. And franchise is what makes you money, right? So yeah. this is not, as you're a studio, you can't rely on, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put 40, $40 million budget films in production. That's not what's going to pay the bills. Like it's... Mm -hmm. it's comic book IP. It's repeatable IP. It's stuff that people... There's a reason why these movies and these characters are on TV all the time, especially in 2020, because people watch this stuff over and over again. So unless you have that, you don't have a lot in terms of assets. And I feel at some point what the, you know, you got to look at the Disney model, right? It's like Disney didn't go buy a star Wars movie. They went to George Lucas and said, what's the number? <laughs> 2 billion, 3 billion, 4 billion. Good. We write the check. We'll cut the check. Now you give us everything. That's yeah. what they're after. Yeah. So it's like, when Mission Impossible, the franchise goes up for sale, there will be bids for that. And that yes. will be an expensive bid. So 
that's what they're looking for. But the studios themselves, some of these guys are going to have to merge because I just don't see that they have enough in the pipeline to get them through. And to your point, they're going to have to sell off whatever they have that they think can find an audience. And mm. we've seen like the streaming services like Netflix can create an audience. Like we were talking about this the other day, like shows that were on in other local television markets or on lesser known cable channels for years mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. were not hits. Yeah. Go up on Netflix, they're in the algorithm, they hit you in, in the queue, and all of a sudden everyone's like, This is amazing. Shit's Creek, amazing comedy, wins all the Emmys. It's a Netflix show. <laughs> no, it was on TV like a year before <laughs> it was on Netflix. Like, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, no, I, I think that's these guys are all circling and just waiting with the, with the wallet to see what IP comes available and if they can snap it up for value off of studios who are just hurting for cash. It's definitely going to be very interesting to see what happens when movies like Jurassic Park, Mission Impossible, um, Fast and the Furious, when they're done and things still haven't improved that much that you can say movie theaters are not open. What, what, what do they do? Um, they just can't sell one movie. Right. It's it's a problem. How do they solve it? I don't know. Unless they. I don't know if you've mentioned this, but they get bought out by someone like Apple, someone like. Uh, Amazon that buys these studios where they can, you know, do content for their own streaming platforms um well i think i think yeah so i think the other thing too is like keep an eye on something like soul if i think when we get to a place where one of these really works and the streaming service gives you the numbers to say like here's how it worked mm -hmm. now i think you've got some room for negotiation because you could sell a movie maybe you could then split the back end for that one film with the streaming so if you have a if you have a really juicy property like okay no time to die good example instead of doing a one-year license what if you did almost like as if you were a movie theater i'll split it with you 60 40 or set like some split with like based upon how many people pay and pay to download and pay to watch you share in the economics yeah and like a Disney Plus or Amazon would be willing to do that because otherwise they wouldn't have a cut of that movie up front. So they're yeah. like, all right, we'll take 60% of that yeah. and use our distribution to get yeah. it out to everyone. Yeah. That's also, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, we, I think it, it'll be interesting to see because you and I have said it. We've predicted that this is going to be the last delay for Black Widow. Um Coming to America too went to Amazon and and I think that they're, they're going to release this year as well. So it'll be interesting to see um, what sort of uh, numbers they produce. Whether because this is all still very early, this is they're still figuring this stuff out. Um, so it'll be interesting to see uh, if these film, like you said, these some of these studios won't won't survive. Some of them may get bought, may get bought out. And some of them would just cease to exist. And I think this is just a, a testament to the times that we're in because it's crazy. When I walk down New York City, you see all these places closed. You see theaters closed, which leads us to Disney's future business. You had stated um, in our previous conversation outside of the cast, the podcast, that Disney could take advantage of this situation please enlighten the people as to what you have in mind or what you think disney may want to think about well this is a wild theory i have no information on this but all i'm looking at is but it makes sense though physical movie theaters are either in bankruptcy or going to go into bankruptcy so the the value ascribed to a mo an average movie theater today is as low as it's probably ever been in the last 30, 40, 50 years. So if I'm Disney or if I'm, even if I'm net, but Disney's the most sensible because Disney has physical stuff, right? The amusement parks, the stores, they have retail already. What if I went and bought one of these theater chains out of bankruptcy? So I said, okay, I'm going to go in, I'll save the chain 
I know that I'm gonna, it's gonna burn them a hole in my pocket now, but I also know there's gonna be a vaccine. There's gonna come a day where people are gonna come back to movie theaters. But now when they come back, it's a Disney brand of theater. Now, when you come in, you got the new stuff. Maybe you got a rotation of some classic stuff and it's all Disney. And it's the only place, if you wanna see the next Marvel movie on the big screen, I now control 3,000 locations. And it's the only theater chain that can get our films on the big screen. So now you can watch it on streaming if you want, maybe pay a lot for that. But if you want to see it in a movie theater, you got to go to a Disney movie theater to see it. I, I just wonder, because we've seen with some of these companies, like think about Amazon when they bought Whole Foods. It's like, we thought of Amazon as digital, 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 everything, online, online, every, everything. And then all of a sudden they pivoted and went, said, no, we want some physical stores. Yeah. You see these companies straddle that line sometimes because they think there's value in in going the other way. And so I just wonder if you were ever thinking about buying a movie theater now or sometime in the next six, nine months if things don't improve, might not be the worst time to cut a check. Yeah. It would be interesting to, to, to or wonder, because I believe a few months back or a year back, there was some rumor that Amazon might buy AMC or stuff or something. Obviously, these guys have the cash to retrofit these theaters into an experience, a new experience. Just think about all the all the things now that people wear to get that immersive experience with music. They wear these vests so that you can feel whatever they want you to feel, right? Suppose you went into a theater where you get seated theaters the, the the chairs move around or you feel the wind or whatever this is something that disney can do and make it their own and make it safe for people to go this is something that they certainly should think about and because obviously right now amusement parks are out of the question it's, it's just too much to really think about in terms of retrofitting and making because you're still going to take less money if you think about social distancing and all that stuff uh, a cap between how many people you can bring into a place right would you pay $30 for a ticket for a Disney experience at a theater instead of 15 or 20 bucks maybe yeah but it's also like there's a nostalgia factor too. It's like, let's say with the release of, I don't know, Shang-Chi, let's say Black Widow makes it to the theaters. So the release of Black Widow, but now it's a Disney only theater. So when you go into, you can, you can watch Black Widow, that'll get half the screens, but you could also watch original Avengers movie. You can say, Hey, you want to relive some of Black Widow's greatest hits? We'll put that on the back on the big screen for you. Uh, you know, kid, we got some kids want to, we'll put original Lion King back on a big screen. Like, you tell, like given that you don't really have to advertise that you don't have to negotiate that anymore because you co own the theater i think there's an audience like you throw empire strikes back on the big screen you think people are not going to show up to see that once in a while if it's, it's a different experience gravy. of course it's all great so. um disney has a has a lot to think about who knows if they even having these conversations i'm sh i'm sure there are smart people out there that are are, are thinking about what to do Cur currently with we certainly know that they're concentrating all their efforts into this their streaming platform because that's where people are watching their content um we know that the mandalorian is coming out this weekend or friday sorry um and people are going to watch it gonna, and and based on the buzz that the first season got people are certainly who weren't uh, on the Disney Plus platform are, are, are there now And again I have to emphasize This Disney group watch uh, feature I think it has a possibility Of being uh, a, a huge uh, a, a Differentiator Between some of the other streaming platforms And who knows if they start Implementing sort of or, or tweaking That idea into their own uh, on, on service This is a very interesting time COVID has been a catalyst for innovation and change and has sped it up in a in a in a way that we didn't think uh it was possible um 
And of course, a lot of companies are going under because they can't don't don't have the money or the infrastructure to 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 move forward and, and, and do something different. And the big players who have the cash, who have content, who have ideas that are certainly provide a different experience are going to uh win um it's very exciting man disney 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 has a lot going for them and i think they know that i think they know that but just to go back real quick with the streaming platforms and subscribers and stuff like that i don't think that one like let's say black Widow comes out next week is Black Widow, that film alone, going to probably gain you some subscribers? Yes, of course. Is it going to get give you a bunch of subscribers? I don't know. I don't think so. Just for one movie? Whoever isn't subscribed now, whoever isn't subscribed now um, and subscribes to Black Widow and gets that and sees the movie, who's to say that they won't um, unsubscribe after seeing it a couple of times, right? But if you give him Black Widow, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, a WandaVision, all these different things. Uh, what's, the, what's this guy's name? Obi-Wan. That show, the, the Ashoka show. They, you know, if you give them all this stuff at once, because again, right now, Disney just has, for me, in my opinion, Mandalorian and Hamilton. That's it. I've seen those things already. I don't really watch a lot of Disney Plus. Right. Um, so funnily enough, I w- I've been watching the right stuff, the remake of the right stuff, which is curiously produced by Warner Brothers Television, but is okay. actually on Disney Plus. Okay, really interesting. Watching. Not a bad show, actually, but mm-hmm. I-, I hear your point on that. And there's definitely more coming. But Hamilton was a good example. Like Hamilton, obviously, everyone knows the production, probably seen the production. That did generate a lot of audience and did bump the subscriber base by virtue of, I think, the way it was shot, right? It was kind of an actual, almost like true film production of a Broadway yeah. Broadway show. So that would suggest that in a single event type, if it's done well, if it's good enough, might actually help in that regard. But I think also with something like Black Widow, they it's also the captive audience. Like who among us that has Disney Plus is not paying for that when yeah. it comes out? We all are. Yeah. <laughs> if yeah, we yeah. don't do it, the kids will make us do it. Like, yeah. it is yeah. that way. So, yeah. 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 I mean, again, this is interesting times. A lot of excitement. Uh, a lot of things that have yet to come out that have been announced. People, stuff that still are, are being worked on. Um, a lot of news, but yet not a lot of delivery on that content uh, as of yet. Um, we're well, Mandalorian is this weekend, so this yes. is actually one of the few like big new. Like, yes, 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 guys yes, yes, yes. We'll finally, get something. So. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you saw the boys. Yeah, the boys. Yeah, boys is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but again, when I watch Prime, I don't know what other shows. I don't know if you can recommend some shows on Amazon Prime, but that's, Jack Ryan's that's pretty good. Jack Ryan. Were. Not bad, yeah. It's especially if you've read the Tom Clancy books, they really draw heavily from the actual stories. And um, I think this it's another one with a supporting cast. Like Krasinski is fine, but it's the supporting cast that, and I think the production value that that makes that show work. So that's one. That one's not bad. I would yeah. check that one out. So again, um, it'll be interesting to see what happens when these shows comes out. When these shows come out, I think we have one division coming out in. December? We still don't have a date. I don't think we've... I I haven't seen a commercial. That's the thing is we've seen a lot of Mandalorian commercials. I think by design, they don't want to confuse the marketing. Mm -hmm, I'm curious mm -hmm. to see if once Mandalorian hits, we start to see actual commercials with a release date for for WandaVision. Yeah, so there's there's still a lot out there that hasn't been released and they've promised this year. Um, But we'll see, man. A lot of exciting stuff. And uh, again, thank you all thank all of you for the subscriptions, the uh, the likes, the comments. Um, we're gonna do a lot of different things on this show. Keep a keep a lookout for our spotlight show. The Superman conversation was fantastic. Um, that one is ready to go. I'm just waiting for some artwork, and then 
we're going to be uh, uh, doing a, a lot of those. Uh, hopefully the next one we can do. I don't know what which one uh, you have in mind for the next one. I was, you know me, you know what I'm already thinking about. Batman. I would, I would guess you want to do Hulk. That's the one I feel like you're, you're itching to kind of re re fix that one somehow. But yeah, we can do the Hulk. We can definitely do the Hulk. We can definitely do the Hulk. We let's let's switch it off. Um, let's do one DC and one Marvel, and even do Bond, man. Because we we're not only gonna do uh, DC and Marvel. We'll we'll talk about some other stuff because there's definitely other things that we're interested in, like Matrix when that finally happens. So. Um, but thanks again, Brian, for joining me on the show, man. Um, this has been a good show. A lot of stuff coming out. And um, again, we talk about... First of all, I got to give a shout out to Comics Explained, uh, Emergency Awesome, Cosmic Wonder, Everything Always. Those guys, every single day, they put out something. They keep you up to date with the news. Uh, we... Once a week, we're not going to bombard you with a bunch of content. We're just going to go dive a little bit deeper into some of these, these these news items and what the future holds for some of these characters. Uh, so if you're looking for when when you're driving home for, to, to work or, or, or from work, you can put us on and, 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 and enjoy a good conversation. And um, we'll see you next week. Um, hopefully we do a spotlight on the Hulk. We gotta, we gotta do some research. I gotta do some research on the Hulk because I don't. There's not a lot of. There's certainly a lot of good moments, and a lot of bad ones too. I don't know which one. I'll definitely mention some bad ones. And and if you've watched the show, you know which bad ones I'm already talking about. Um, but thank you once again for joining us. We we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report, and on the the Spotlight Report. No, not the Spotlight. The Spotlight uh, segment. Thank you again, and have a good night. Be safe. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Um, hit that like button. Share it with your friends if they're into this sort of stuff. Um, and we'll see you next time. Thank you again. All right. What spotlight did you want to do? I wanted to do Batman, you know. That's, that's Superman. That's, that Superman was good. It was fun. <laughs>